What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So where we left off in the last R65 video, so we were trying to figure out how we wanted to mate up our rear subframe and the kind of support bar that goes down and gives us that little bit of extra strength. I had talked about using a, a Heim joint for that and they came in. I've already scrapped that idea. So let me tell you guys uh, what I'm thinking about doing now. So this is what I have landed on and this is what is called a clevis joint. So very similar to the other joint, it is designed to slip into the end of a tube and be welded on. And what that's gonna give us is a nice sturdy mount that we can then mate up to like a small tab on the frame, you know, about a quarter of an inch thick, wherever we want it to be, we can weld that in. This will be able to just slide right over that and bolt on. And that gives us a nice strong joint completely removable. We will have an additional welded tab on the frame, but that's not a huge deal. Uh, and then that will have no movement in there. So we're not gonna have to worry about any side to side or any of the other movement uh, with the other style joint. So this is what we're gonna go with. Um, I have actually thought of another use for these Heim joints and I'll uh, kind of go into detail on that here in just a little bit, but we're gonna focus on finishing this uh, support tube up for now. Because this joint is so universal and we can literally weld that tab anywhere we want, uh, we have kind of complete flexibility on where we want this support beam to be. So originally in the last video, I was talking about doing something, you know, kind of like that. Uh, but what I decided to do, or at least we're gonna try it, is match this angle here of the back of the frame hoop. So if we match that angle, you know, it'll be something similar to this. And then we weld that mount onto the end you know, it'll give us something somewhere about there. And I think that'll be really clean. It'll be a nice kind of, um, you know, mating of the two mounts right into this nice smooth rear section. I I have both sides all made up. I just pressed in the clevis joints for now. I haven't actually welded anything, uh, but I have all the copes done. So that's matching up really nicely. I think it's gonna be a good overall look. What I need to move on to now is actually designing uh, and making the little tab that's gonna come off the back of the frame. So I mentioned earlier, that's gonna be quarter inch plate. I'm gonna start with some cardboard and kind of uh, work out a few different designs just to uh, you know kind of see how I can make this look good. I don't want it to be just like a piece of square, you know, plate coming off. It's gonna look kind of silly. I want it to look similar to this one up here where it's just like a nice soft edges and you know, I want it to look somewhat factory. So I'm gonna make it out of cardboard first. We'll transfer that to some quarter inch plate over on the uh, do all bandsaw, get it cut out. And we're ready to start to tack all this together. Got the tabs made up and also went ahead and tacked the support bars in place uh, so I could take a step back, make sure everything looks nice and square and even and all the angles match and uh, you know the overall design itself uh, is the way we want it to be. So I'm happy with it so far. So what I need to do now is just go ahead and grind the paint off the back of this frame rail uh, so I can throw a nice big tack on the top and bottom of this tab. Uh, then everything will be in its final place. Uh, then before the day ends, I'd like to go ahead and pull the rear subframe off and kind of finish weld uh, these two portions right here to make sure that those bars don't move at all.
got the tabs all welded on and put some extra weld around the support beams and everything so I can actually test it. Went ahead and bolted it on. Now this thing is rock solid here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, no movement whatsoever. So let's throw the seat on and see how it looks with that. So here it is with the seat on it. I'm pretty stoked with uh, how it's turning out. I do think I'm going to end up raising the front of this tank. Uh, maybe, I don't know, half to three quarters of an inch, something like that. If you remember, we have that rubber mount on the back that we can adjust the height of. So that's a three minute change. Um, we'll also have a little rear fender out of here that will help kind of fill out this rear area. So it kind of looks really stubby at the moment. Um, and then of course we have our entire rear suspension to design, but in theory, I should be able to sit on this thing since the center of the frame is supported by the stand. This will be my first test of the riding position. I bolted the seat on all the way. So I'm gonna go, I've got a little bit bent over, but my, my feet end up in a good spot. Should be pretty comfortable. I'm wondering if these handlebars are gonna be high enough. I mean, that'll be pretty good. It's like a kind of aggressive. I love the, how the tank kind of slims down in the back. You got the big old cylinders hanging out. Pretty cool place to be. This thing is rock solid. I think we did uh, plenty of strength on it. Oh yeah, it's gonna be nice. Now that the fabrication of the rear subframe is done, I wanna move on to uh, the rear suspension. So I wasn't able to locate the material I need just yet, but I figured I'd wanna walk through uh, with you guys what I'm thinking, and you can tell me if I've just uh, gone off the rocker and should go a different direction or if we think that this design uh, will make sense. I am very actively designing this in my head and I'm sure some of you guys know uh, a lot more than I do about this particular uh, kind of build. So what I'm thinking is a kind of mono shock setup uh, but with potentially two individual shocks. Let me walk through uh, the idea. So I'll get some thick wall tubing and bend up a hoop you know similar to this. It'll probably be you know, maybe about this long total. I can use these heim joints that we already had. And basically I've already machined up an adapter so that the heim joint slides right over the stock uh, lower shock mount on that side. This is the stock lower shock mount on this side. I can use a little spacer that allows us to use this factory mounting bolt location. Now we have a nice mount here. I can also kind of play with that a little bit. I bend up a hoop that will kind of terminate right into those heim joints on either side. So with me so far. Then I need to figure out how to connect the front of this hoop to the front of the swing arm. Uh, but if I want this to be adjustable, I need uh, that mount to articulate at least a little bit. So I want it to be able to move back and forth this direction. Um, you know, when it's kind of unbolted or loosened up, it can move that direction, but I don't want it to have any movement side to side or any uh, movement vertically. I basically just want it to, to be able to go back and forth. And that's because if I can change the length of these, you know, unbolt it, twist them out a couple, put it back in, that will allow me to dial in the ride height exactly where I want it. Uh, but I need uh, the front section to move with it. So. If you're with me so far, we'll have to figure that out. Maybe I'll use some more of these clevis joints. I don't think that um, I don't think that these heim joints would be a good solution because I think it's going to allow too much movement. So if you picture that being there, just for example, I'll use this shock. I don't plan on running this, but I was planning on putting a shock up and mounting it to the frame underneath the gas tank and then running it at an angle back on each side. So there would be two shocks running at an angle underneath the back of the gas tank and the front of the seat that would then bolt to this hoop, you know, something similar to that. 
we'd obviously have to play around with all the angles and there's a lot to learn as far as suspension geometry and how much travel we have and it's all new and exciting things that I know nothing about. But that's the kind of general idea I'm thinking of. I've seen a lot of people do it with a one single shock. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do it with two shocks before. Uh, and I think it could be a really cool look. There's just enough space under here. Um, I think it will actually be kind of a complementary angle to this. If we can have the shock kind of go in a similar angle the other way, it kind of create this cool little V shape through here. Uh, we might also be able to match that kind of angle down uh, with this frame hoop. There's just a lot of uh, potential to make it a really cool design piece. Uh, and the whole purpose of this bike is for me to get out of my comfort zone. So that is generally what I'm thinking. Uh, what I need to do now is off camera, do a bunch of research on uh, the proper kind of thickness of material, maybe how uh, some other people have done these monoshock conversions and if they kept them adjustable or if they did just keep this a rear frame section uh, completely rigid and then you could just you know adjust the length of the shock to adjust the ride height um, you know there's a couple of different options we have for sure but since i already have these heim joints if we could use them uh, i'd like to i think it would be pretty cool to have that adjustability uh, built in well that's going to be it for this one guys i am very happy to have the subframe checked off the to-do list now is on to the rear suspension design. So please do leave a comment uh, and let me know what you think of that design. Also let me know if you have any other crazy ideas. I'm willing to try you know, just about anything. This is a experimental bike for us. So if you have something crazy you've always wanted to see, uh, I'm down to, uh, to try and build it and uh, bring you guys along for the ride. So I did have a very exciting box come in the other day. Boom, I mean, that's all I'm gonna show you. Um, so that is a awesome new part for the engine that came in. So after that rear suspension is done, uh, the next big thing is pulling this engine back out, completely going through it, adding some goodies, replacing seals, and just making sure that uh, you know all those parts are good to go. And then that's going to be kind of the last of the major fab work. Uh, everything else is going to be kind of little details, final assembly. There's still a ton of work to do. Um, so I appreciate you guys watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.